Hey guys, Dan Andrews here from SonsOfSuicide.com, author of Sons of Suicide and the Journals of Taylor Hart. You know, I was just spending a lot of time thinking today. I, I was doing some promotional stuff for the publishing company, and I was in a few bookstores talking about getting the book in there, uh, Sons of Suicide primarily. And I realized I didn't even do a video talking about the Journals of Taylor Hart uh, like I did for Sons of Suicide. I know it wasn't like the most popular video ever, but I think it's interesting to see me talk about it and at least just so you guys have an idea of what the second book was about, just because I, it's been pretty quiet about it. Um, so I figured I'd talk a little bit about writing it and give you a, a brief overview of what it's about and why I think it's awesome. <laughs> but I haven't heard, I haven't, honestly, I haven't even gotten much feedback on it. I, I didn't mail out as many review copies as I did for Sons of Suicide, and um, only a handful of people have actually bought it or read it um, that I've given copies to. This is actually... This is even still a proof copy. I don't even have a retail copy on hand yet, um, which is my mistake. I, that's my fault. I need to actually get on top of that. Um, I'll read the back for you guys, a little blurb here. Um, An extraordinary, disturbingly powerful collection of journals. The Journals of Taylor Hart is a collection of writings penned by a lonely, violent, and yet brilliant young man. Spending across more than four of his most formative years, culminating in the ultimate end of murder and slaughter on, the, on a university campus, giving the reader a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to glimpse into the mind of an individual capable of committing a mass school shooting. On Monday, December 29, 2008, Taylor Hart began writing his journals in spiral-bound notebooks. Obsessively, he recorded everything ranging from his thought-provoking philosophical views down to beautiful short stories, even down to entries that could be described as nothing other than the products of raw emotion, insanity-driven rants. After four years of spiraling downward, Taylor's maniacal and sociopathic progression collapses, concluding with his suicide in his university's observatory and with the confiscation of his writings. But now, after some time, Dan Andrews has reacquired his former close friend's unpublished journals. Published with all of Taylor's originality intact, laced with timeless existential questions and violence, the journals of Taylor Hart forces the reader to confront the question, who is the next person on the brink of committing the world's next atrocity? Now, I'm going to leave a little bit of mystery to that because I refer to myself in the third person. That's up to you to find out exactly how that all works out. Um, the book was, by design, supposed to air, uh, or to toe the line, rather, of fiction and nonfiction. So it's really up to the reader to decide if what, if any, is fictional or nonfictional. Um, I think that's part of the fun of it, and that's part of the fun of it being in journal form, is you get to see this over the time over time this chronological progression of the mentality of this character and or person Taylor Hart um, so it really is like I'll show you an example to get an idea of what it looks like um, where are we at here so you can see like how how it's dated and there's actually like titles for the entries and whatnot and that's how the whole story progresses there's some entries that are that like markedly move the the story along and kind of show very drastic um, shifts in the the thinking of Taylor, um, and those have been noted. They're they're uh, titled to stand out. Um, that's just something I did as the editor. Um, that was primarily my role throughout this book. Um, so yeah, I'd give it a check. Check it out if you if you read Sons of Suicide. I can't imagine you disliking this book. It's more like a psychological thriller than anything. Um, and it's really cheap too. I think I've got the Kindle editions like ninety nine cents, and the the print editions like seven dollars. So it's like half the price, less than half for the Kindle editions, like a tenth of the price of Sons of Suicide, just because it, it is very experimental in nature. Um, that's also why I'm very curious to have some other people to have a large portion of people reading it um, that I haven't before. <laughs> Notice I'm sweating like a pig because I have this huge bright light lighting the room. I'm still. Uh, kind of in the midst, or I'm done remodeling, but my house hasn't been particularly furnished yet. Um, so give it a, check it out. It's been out since May, it's when I moved down to Fort Myers down here. Um, you'll be hearing a lot more. I'm working on two current book projects, um, one of which is fictional. It's a novel. I'm trying to move on, or I, I am moving on from more of like a the deep, sad, more what some other people have called depressing tones of uh, and subject, uh, subject matter. I'm trying to move into more positive, more, because um, I do think art or books or movies or wh whatever has always served the purpose of helping the reader and whatnot escape, and so I'm going to try to move towards a little bit like that. I just had some dark stuff, some more, um, some really serious in tone, 
that I feel like I, I had to get out of the way that were just in me that had to come out. And I think I've done that, and I'm really, uh, my writing's still tip-top, and I'm learning, getting better all the time. And it, I think compared to these past two books, it's worlds apart, because the Journals of Taylor Hart's writing from over four different years, um, whether or not it's mine or Taylor's, it's up to you to figure out. Um, so it, it doesn't really show the, what I've learned, the skills that I've sort of developed in my style, um, which is cool. It's, it's just different. It's just kind of its own thing. Um, and then the second book is nonfiction. That's, I, I probably shouldn't even be talking about it. It's so new. I actually have only been working on it for a couple of days, which is nothing <laughs> in terms of book, book time. Um, and that's nonfiction. It's about kind of how to survive. It's called The Survival or The Penniless Author Survival Guide. So if you're familiar with like Max Brooks's uh, the zombie survival guide, it's kind of a play off that, but it's it's geared towards any young uh, aspiring artist type who's, um, to say the least, struggling to uh, to cope with a lot of the the burdens that come with success as an artist. So um, there's a reason it's not called the how to be a successful author, how to write a New York Times bestseller, because I haven't done that. One thing, though, that I've shown to be very capable at is surviving while being a struggling author, or penniless author. So I think that's awesome. I'm having a ball writing that. It's kind of fun to balance between fiction and nonfiction. Um, so stay tuned. As far as like a timeline for those coming out, the fiction book might be a really long time, um, including editing. I'd say maybe at the soonest we'll see one of them next year. I would say that's reasonable. I'll, I'll, I'll put one out next year. One of those two will be out um, and edited and all finished up. Um, I'm not sure which one. It will kind of just depend on which one moves along the most quickly, which one sort of comes together the best, and we'll go from there. Um, so thanks, guys, for checking it out. If you if the Taylor, journals of Taylor Hart sounds interesting to you, um, I think it's fantastic. It's very experimental and thrilling mentally, at least for me as a writer and also still re still reading it it has like a very profound impact on me um but others have a great day man this is dan andrews author of sons of suicide and the latest working on the next two books uh killing it down here in florida well trying to anyway <laughs> you guys have a good one